For three generations, Motorola's Moto G series has arguably been the king of the mid-tier smartphone. With Lenovo taking the reins of Motorola, is the Moto G4 a worthy successor? This is Chris with Android Espionage and we're about to find out with my unboxing and review of the Lenovo Moto G4. Now while there are two versions of this device, the Moto G4 and G4 Plus, I'll mainly be focusing on the $200 G4 and pointing out differences you'll get with the G4 Plus as we move along. Starting with the packaging, all that's included in the box with the device besides the quick start guide is Moto's turbocharger. Peeling the front sticker off reveals the front camera, an earpiece that doubles as a speaker grill and a big 5.5 inch screen that we'll talk about more later on. The Moto G4 is made entirely of hard plastic around the edges with a softer feeling back cover. On the bottom of the device, we've got your micro USB charging port and your thumbnail groove that lets you pull the back cover off. One side is completely clean while the other side shows off your texture power button and the volume rocker. On the top you've got your 3.5mm headphone jack with that curved design that tapers down on the edges like we're used to seeing in previous generations. Another familiar design choice from yesteryear is the return of the famous Motorola dimple and the strip above it that houses the dual LED flash and the 13 megapixel camera sensor. Although the battery is non-removable, the back cover is removable and this not only grants you access to your micro SD card slot and SIM slot that both supports micro and nano SIMs, but also gives you the ability to swap covers for some customization. If you want more customization options, the Moto G4 is customizable through Moto Maker for more color options for the back covers and the accents. As far as specs go, the Moto G4 is using Qualcomm's Octa-Core Snapdragon 617 processor, a 3000 mAh battery, 2 gigs of RAM, and either 16 or 32 gigs of storage that's expandable up to 120 gigs. The $250 Moto G4 Plus, however, comes in either 16 or 64 gigabytes of storage, and either 2 or 4 gigabytes of RAM depending on which storage size you choose to buy. Unlike the G4, the G4 Plus is also rocking a fingerprint sensor below the display. Speaking of the display, the Moto G4 series has bumped up the screen this year to a full 1080p HD resolution on a 5.5 inch IPS LCD display, unlike last year's 5 inch 720p display. For many this is a big jump that some may not be pleased with, but I love this change. Colors aren't as vibrant as an AMOLED display like the OnePlus 3's 1080p screen, but the Moto G4 holds its own in regards to sharpness with 401 pixels per inch and has really good color reproduction. Media consumption was a pleasure and the extra screen real estate was a welcome change as it made web browsing and email easy on the eyes. The speaker housed above the display was also pretty good, although it didn't get as loud as I wanted it to. The clarity was definitely there and it wasn't too tinny. Overall, I'd choose this over any bottom mounted speaker and to be fair, most mono speakers would be a downgrade when coming from my main daily driver, the Moto X Pure. When it came to call quality, the G4 delivered clear sound during calls with no distortion and sound came in loud and clear on my end with minimal background disturbance. In my time with the G4, I didn't have many performance issues when it came to multitasking, and gaming was fairly solid for a phone at this price point. The snappy performance is partially due to the light skin that Motorola puts on their phones. It's running stock Android Marshmallow with a few tweaks built in. The experience is very Nexus-like, but includes things like Moto Display, which gives you quick access to notifications without the need to wake your screen, the hands-free Moto Voice that gives you quick access to Google, and gestures like Flip for Do Not Disturb, Chop Twice for the flashlight, and the Twist Gesture to quickly activate the camera. When you use this feature, you'll find a completely redesigned camera interface that, in my opinion, is very much improved from the previous generations. You now have your shutter button off to the side so you can tap to focus and control exposure separately. You also have things like a new manual mode if you want more control over things like ISO, exposure, color temperature, and manual focus. This overhaul definitely helped breathe some much needed life into the camera experience. In outdoor performance, the 13 megapixel camera actually took some pretty nice shots for a $200 smartphone with good color reproduction and a decent amount of detail even without OIS present. The same couldn't always be said for low light performance as shots were often blown out and overexposed in dark situations. With a steady hand and HDR, colors were still good but there is still plenty of noise in the darker areas of the shots. As for video, the Moto G4 is able to record videos in up to 1080p resolution at 30 frames per second for some pretty nice video. Software tweaks help with some stabilization with minimal warping so overall it was good to use. The same definitely cannot be said for the slow motion mode which was absolutely terrible to use. 
It looked like I was recording in the year 1994 because Moto did 720p slow motion for a low res 520p slow motion video at 120 frames per second. It was so bad that I think Lenovo would have been better off leaving this feature out altogether. The front facing 5 megapixel camera was a good addition as it took nice, crisp self portraits and clear video, especially when outdoors. Another department where this device continues to shine is in battery life. The 3000 mAh battery can easily last you a full day with moderate use. I often got less because I push my devices through their paces, so on average, I would get close to 3 hours of screen on time with heavy use. This included lots of music and video streaming, some phone calls, texting, and social media. Average users should fare better than I did, and if you do find yourself low on battery, you could use the included turbocharger to fast charge the Moto G4 for up to 6 hours of battery life in 15 minutes from 0%. That pretty much wraps up my unboxing and review of the Moto G4. All in all, the bottom line is that Lenovo's first iteration of the Moto G series is definitely a tough contender to beat. The display, performance, and battery life are commendable, especially with a starting price of $200. Things like the Moto software tweaks and all the customization options through Moto Maker definitely add more value and set this phone apart from the competition as well. Expandable storage is making a comeback in 2016 and is a great addition to a $200 phone because even some flagships like the OnePlus 3 don't offer it, and the fact that Lenovo does is great. As great as this mid-range device is, I do think you should spend the extra $50 plus dollars on the Moto G4 Plus instead to maximize the bang you get for your buck. But if you're on a budget, you won't lose with the G4 either. Let me know what version of the G4 you guys have and if you've customized it. If not, which version would you pick up? Let me know and be sure to drop a like below if you found this review helpful. And be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss coverage on future tech and follow me on social media if you're not doing so already. Thanks for watching guys and this is Chris with Android Espionage and the Moto G4. See you soon.